Well, in this chaotic world we're in, many Americans are looking for get-rich-quick schemes. But our next guest says the best formula for success really isn't new at all. In fact, he says it's thousands of years old. Can anyone prosper and make it financially? Are there rules to follow to assure financial success? In his new book, Thou Shall Prosper, Rabbi Daniel Lapin offers a practical approach to creating wealth based on principles from Jewish tradition and scripture. Lapin shares ten fundamental commandments about business and money found in the Hebrew scriptures and teachings that can help people from any background. In an era when the reputation of business has been sullied by scandals and negative news coverage, Lapin proclaims what he calls the dignity and morality of business, and he outlines the path to prosperity. Well, it's a pleasure to welcome back a dear friend, Orthodox Rabbi Daniel Lappin. Rabbi, God bless you. I'm glad to see you. Thank you so much, Pat. You're a champion of the things we all hold dear, and we're just so happy to have you with us. Thank you. You've departed a bit from some of your previous books about uh, uh, biblical themes. This is Thou Shalt Prosper. How come? What did you write this for? Well, I believe that, that my ministry and mission is to uh, bring ancient Jewish wisdom to bear for the benefit of all Americans, in, in, se in a sense to restore uh, the heritage, because mm -hmm. colonial Americans knew all of this stuff. Uh, yeah. uh, colonial pastors, people like Cotton Mather, they, they knew all this stuff. And, and I thought my job as, as an Orthodox Jewish rabbi would be to, to make this accessible. So we spoke about uh, some of the, the, the uh, ancient Jewish secrets to, to how we ought to live our lives socially mm -hmm. and, and politically. But I wanted to now uh, basically answer the question for people and, and to do it in a way that only a Jewish rabbi could do, uh, which was to say, look, anyone with eyes in his head knows that Jews have been disproportionately good with money. Now, you're not supposed <laughs> to say that, but, but it's true. Well, and I, thought, I don't now, think that's an insult. That's of course it isn't. Of course yeah. it isn't. And I thought, you know, let's find out what the standard reasons. And there, there are three basic myths people have. Right, One well. is that Jews rip everybody off and lie and cheat and steal. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I, it's easy to debunk. I mean, Jews just like everybody else. You know, they are, they're the bad apples. But by and large, you don't succeed over the long term by lying and cheating. So that's not the answer. That's right. uh, one of the other explanations is the Cossacks killed all the poor Jews. Oh, leaving the rich ones to reproduce. Well, <laughs> to believe that silly I, racial I explanation. That, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've got to believe a racist explanation that there's a sort of money gene that, that yeah. Jews pass on. Well, okay. It's absurd, you know, yeah, so right. that's out of the question. And the last one is that, well, Jews are just smarter than everyone else. Well, that's also not the case. And in any event, uh, people know the expression, too smart for your own good. Or, mm -hmm. You know, if, if, that, if, if being smart was the way to make money, then, of course, university faculties would be filled with people who are brilliant with money, and we know that's not the case. Well, you know, in the, in the Middle Ages, the, the Jewish facility for, for making money brought uh, a problem upon them, and people tried to steal it away from them. You know, that's the whole idea of you know, Ivanhoe, was, it was torture of Jews to get their money away from that's them. That's right, and of course, every country that has evicted its Jews tends to descend and decline economically, mm -hmm. uh, not surprisingly, because there is a certain economic vitality that Jews bring, not because of genes and not because of brains and not because of lying and cheating, but because they understand the basic Ten Commandments for making money that came f down to, to Jews from Mount Sinai and have been spread to the world. And that's why every successful e economy has always been a Christian country, a, a biblically based country. I what is the leading commandment? You said they got ten of them, but what's the, if there's one that starts out, what is it? I think the most important one springs from the basic idea that uh, we speak of customer service, mm -hmm. but we also speak of a worship service. Yes. And this is the basic idea that serving other people is not menial. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful thing to do. In the same way that we serve God, we can serve other people. And the secret to success is not getting up every morning and saying, God, please give me a Ferrari. It's getting up every morning and saying, God, how can I serve your children? Mm -hmm. How can I become obsessively preoccupied with finding out what other people need and what they desire, and how can I supply it? And when you supply what other people need and desire, mm -hmm. don't be surprised if a 
good, loving God rewards you. Well, you know, that's one of the main principles that Jesus Christ brought. He says, you know, he that's great among you, let him be servant of all. So that's exactly the principle. They are fundamental the truths. Law of greatness. Serving the, 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 the most, the, he that serves the most is the greatest. It's so clear. Yeah. All right, what's number two? And number two, I think, is to recognize that no matter what you do, you are in business. And to see that as a noble, moral, dignified occupation. Because being in business means you are somebody who is focused on giving other people what they need and what they want. And one of the things I often tell to people, I say, you know, pull out a dollar bill and look at it. Now, did you rob somebody to get that dollar bill? Did you defraud somebody?